Hey y'all, and welcome to Skyrim Scripting. On this episode, we're going to be using SKSE, or Skyrim Script Extender. If you've ever installed mods for Skyrim, you should be familiar with this because you've been asked to install it because most mods out there, lots of them, rely on SKSE. And by the end of this episode, you'll probably understand why, because we're going to write scripts that use SKSE. But first, let's put ourselves in a scenario where we might need it and find out why so you can kind of better understand it. Let's make a mod. Here's what we've done so far. We installed Skyam, the creation kit, uh, our mod managers, both Vortex and Mod Organizer 2. We're just going to use Mod Organizer 2 in this episode. And we learned how to set up Visual Studio Code with Pyro so that we can write all of our scripts outside of the creation kit. So now, SKSE, what do we want to do? Let's make a mod. Ooh, days on the episode so far. Da -da -da -da. My final take. I've got uh, four previous takes. Um, fingers crossed. I think this one's it. So uh, manage, create. Um, I'm going to make a mod that I've used for a number of tutorials. Um, screaming. Um, when your player walks around and they pick up items, we'll print out a line of text. So I call it pick up lines. Ta -da. Cool. So pick up lines. Let me copy that because we're going to use it in a couple places. Default game INI settings. I wonder if there's a way to always have that checked. I don't want profile specific game uh, INI settings. Uh, select. Let's make a new empty mod and quick reminder. We have all of our mods in a folder. For me, it's C Skyrim mod, so here's everything. And when we uh, create a new empty mod and call it pickup lines, it'll show up up there. And it's empty for the most part. We want to use Creation Kit to make it a ESP and Elder Scrolls plugin. So we will configure Creation Kit to save all of its files inside of pickup lines. And uh, if we try and run Creation Kit, it's going to be like, hey, you need to turn on pickup lines. So it's an enable it and kick her on off. And you should see this white box, which means that we are running uh, Creation Kit with the SSE Creation Kit fixes, which will make your lives a lot better. So uh, let's save and we'll just call this pickup lines. And we'll open up Skyrim and. Uh, we can set pickup lines as active, it already is. Uh, this runs so fast, I barely have time to drink tea. Before I use the creation fixes, I always made tea during the uh, creation kit loading. Oh, it's too fast. I didn't even get to sip my tea. It's so fast. Um, 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 um. Uh, we want our player to walk around and uh, we need to know when they pick up items. So let's go find that event. We really haven't been on creationkit.com much, really it, at all in this episode series. Um, my bad. I'm um, just working up your knowledge kind of slowly. So we're going to go to creationkit.com, which is, as you can probably guess, the official documentation for Creation Kit for both Skyrim and Fallout 4. So we're going to click on the left for Skyrim. And what we're mostly interested in there's all kinds of great stuff here. You should check out the tutorials. We want the scripting reference. And once again, there's lots of great material here. I'm going to be using some of these Papyrus concepts and things like that in the Papyrus Basics uh, video that's coming up in a couple episodes. Uh, on this page, I like to scroll down to the subcategories because there's one for events. I go here all the time. So here's a bunch of events. Um, and um, it's like you can uh, get an event for when your player takes a, a bow shot or when any actor that a script is attached to them takes a bow shot uh, or when a book is read um, when uh, an object is sold I don't know if it's on the object itself the object has just been sold by someone yeah versus there's probably an on sell to get when the actor sells stuff Hmm. I don't know how that works. Um, we want, we care about items. Item. 
is show highlight all. Here's everything with item in the name. Uh, there's one called on item added, which looks good to me. Event received when an item is inserted into this object's container. Dirty. So um, the actor, the player isn't necessarily a container, but they are. They act as a container so far as Skyrim is concerned because they have stuff. And so on a player, you can receive the event on item added, and it's given for things whenever it's called. You can get the thing that was added, um, an iron sword. You can get how many were added, 42 iron swords or arrows. Um, sometimes there is a specific reference to, um, um, to the item. Like I think if there's one instance of this item in the Skyrim world, maybe you'll get a uh, object reference. And then, um, you know, if this if you took this from a treasure chest, then you can get a reference to the treasure chest, see what else is in it. Um, if it was given to you by another actor, which is a container, then um, you can get a reference to that actor for their stuff and you can trade stuff. So whatever. Here's an example. It's kind of exactly what we want. I picked up item count times thingy from the world. It's kind of exactly what we want. Um, cool, the player gave me. Cool, let's do basically exactly this, but we're going to do it in a debug.message box. So let's grab the event code first, except we don't have a script. So how do you attach a script to the player? Well, generally you make a quest, and then that quest has a quest alias, which has a reference alias to the player, which can receive events. Obvious, right? It's just how you do it. So um, in CK, we're gonna make a quest. Uh, right click anywhere here for new. We'll call it pickup lines. Pick up lines quest. Uh, hit OK. Don't mess with the quest until you hit OK. Uh, pull it back up. You should copy its name before you hit OK so that you can do that really easily. Um, and now we want it to have a quest alias, which is a reference alias. We want an uh, alias for a, a reference, which will be the player. So type player ref, R E F. Choose fill type specific reference. Select forced reference, sell any, and it should auto populate player ref or find it from this drop down. Now we can attach a script to the player, which I'll do right now. We'll say new script, and uh, this should extend a reference alias, reference alias, not an actor. Uh, even though it's a reference alias and not an actor, it still will, will receive all the events that the player would get on player load game, on bow shot, or on all that nonsense. So we're going to do pickup lines player script. I'll just say like this represents the pickup lines player. I don't know. Uh, okay, okay, save, peace. Now let's go to VS Code. So just open up code. You can, you know, pin it to your taskbar or whatever you want to do. Um, go to the cute little uh, papyrus extension doohickey um, or control shift X uh, and search for papyrus to get it if you don't have it. And you would want the Workspace Explorer too. So check out the uh, previous episode on writing scripts outside of Creation Kit. So we want this cute little scroll. Going to go to three dots, generate Skyrim special edition project files, browse to our mod, which is here. It's pickup lines, select the folder, uh, go over to our workspaces explorer. Or if you don't have that, control shift X, look for workspace explorer, whatever it's called. It's called workspaces explorer. Workspace explorer right there. Anyway, that will get us really quickly into pickup lines. Now we've got our script. And let's do that on item added thingamajigger. Copy, paste. It's kind of long, sorry. I'm going to use control B to whoop, 
close that side so you can almost see all of it. But you still can't unless I zoom out. I'm going to zoom in. Uh, end event. So let's do basically exactly what they did. Uh, I picked up a item count of blah from the world. Um, we don't care about the from the world or not. We'll just say I picked up five times fork or whatever. So we'll see what this prints out. Uh, and we'll debug message box. Um, and you can hover over this and see it displays an in-game message uh, box. If you want to see what else is on debug, just type debug dot and you'll see all this stuff. This would teleport them. This would whatever. We could do something absurd, like if they pick up a bow, we teleport them to Riften. I don't know. Um, uh, I'll do if they pick up a bow, teleport them to Riften. <laughs> let's do that. But first, let's just see what this does. Control Shift B, and it'll build this project. Cool. You can hit enter to close that terminal. Now let's head over to Mod Organizer 2 and run the game. Boop. I know we're not talking about SKSE yet. That's coming in just a moment because we are going to COC to um, yeah. uh, uh, I want to pull up like a list for my tutorials of uh, good COC cells. I'm going to do wind helm candle hearth hall. Haha, <laughs> I spelled it correctly. I own farm outside the city. Do you now? That's so work, cool. Um, I don't think our mod is enabled. So we like made the mod before creation kit made the ESP. So you just always need to remember to check that stupid box. It's not a stupid box, it's a lovely box. Thank you, Mod Organizer 2. Uh, COC Solitude Winking Skeever. I picked up one times form. One times form. One times form. So when this dude is created, put away your axe. Um, when this dude gets created and added to the world, uh, a script adds a couple things to them. So let's take off this dude's ridiculous iron helmet. We're just going to drop it. Where'd it go? Boop, 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 boop. It's there. Let's pick it up. You picked up one times form. Well, that's exciting. We want the name of it. So let's see if we can get the name of it. Uh, let's piece out of here, QQQ. And on item added, gets this form, which is the item that you got. So let's see if you can get a name of a form. Let's just look for form, or you can go look for a form script. And form script. And once you have a lot of this stuff in your history, you can just go to like form script and uh, boop, stuff like that. So once you've got all this stuff in your history, you can uh, easily get to different pages on creation kit so let's look for name because we want the name of this form so not script name not event name not event name aha aha um gets the form's full name that's what we want let's go back to our code let's say uh base item dot get there's no there's no name Screw it, we'll type it anyway. Get name, parentheses. Save, build. Compilation failed. Get name is not a function or does not exist. Well, that's total crap because it's right here. It's right here, yo. Aha! Well, it's under the SKSE member functions, which means this is only available if you're running the Skyrim script extender. The Skyrim script extender, there's two things. Uh, one of them is it allows you to extend scripts and add extra functions. So people will make SKSE plugins that add 
papyrus functions that you can call that we can call from like this type of code so that we can say stuff like get name um, they'll implement that in C++ and uh, there's a little bridge to papyrus so that you can call it from our scripts and people use SKSE for just other native plugin stuff without papyrus I'm totes gonna have if I've got time I'm about to go back to a job uh, I want to have a screencast at least one on how to get a Hello World SKSE plugin up and running uh, that adds a method or a couple methods or functions to Papyrus. Um, there's some great examples out there. Uh, Ryan Someone has a bunch of examples. I love it. So we need SKSE. This ain't gonna work without it. So let's close and install SKSE. SKSE. You'll end up on skse.silverlock.org and you want to zoom in because you're a screencaster, ah, too big. And you want to um, find the build for your build, right? So for VR, SE, or legendary. So we want the SE build. And then this has great documentation. So as a mod author, you should learn to read readmes. If it says readme, you should read it. So we're going to just extract that. We could just, whatever, open it. Ooh, let me associate. Uh, during the screencast tutorial series, I've been installing some of the things on my on my machine because it was um, reformatted. So I can just reassociate that with my 7-zip. We can just open up that archive. Close you. Close you and you. And you and you and you, you and you. Does it read me? I'll just call out a couple things. One, in installation, it says copy the DLL and XE files into your Skyrim S, uh, SE directory. Sure. Okay. Let's go to Skyrim Special Edition. This is this one. Let's go to our 7-zip, and there's a SKSE DLL. There's a SKSE loader executable, and there's a loader DLL. Whoop. Ta-da! We did it. And now to run Skyrim using SKSE, we will no longer run the Skyrim executable, we'll run Skyrim SKSE loader. And uh, to do that from Mod Organizer 2, the easiest way is to close or Mod Organizer 2. And then you should open Mod Organizer 2. And then check the list. Ta-da! SKSE is there. If you want to give it a cute icon, a lot of people give it a cute icon. You can use a thing called Resource Hacker to give it an adorable icon. That's whatever you want. Some people make it a sweet roll. Um, we don't care. We just want to do what this thing says. Now we need to copy the PEX files into data scripts. Huh. The PEX files are needed by all users of SKSE. Well, that's a problem. Um, so as mod authors, um, it goes a horn outside. We don't want to mess with data. Like that's kind of our number one rule is keep data vanilla. Keep this so that it has just what Skyrim and the creation kit came with. Don't mess with it. If you want to mess with it, do it in one of two ways. One use Mod Organizer 2, which doesn't actually mess with it. So there's actually only one way that you should mess with this directory, and it's using Vortex. Use Vortex to control what goes in this folder. So if we want to do that, then we got to put these PEX files into like a mod that Vortex can push into that folder or pull out. Because I want to write mods that don't rely on SKSE, and I need to make sure that I can pull SKSE out of my data folder whenever I want to. So we'll, we'll do that. Let's, let's continue reading. If you create mods, copy the PSE, the source code files, into the data script source directory. Uh huh. So in the previous episode, uh, talking about uh, writing scripts outside of Creation Kit, we touched on imports a little bit. If we keep reading this line, it'll point out that. Um, the PSCs are only needed if you have the creation kit installed and intend to create or, or compile papyrus scripts. That's us. Uh, 
make sure you add them to your include path. Now that's the include path that's used by the Papyrus compiler or Pyro project files or VS Code. Um, so let's just modify this whole thing. Ha, <laughs> ha, pun super not intended. Let's turn it into a mod. So we're gonna take this data folder and instead of dragging it into the real data folder, we're just going to make a mod. So uh, we don't need to use Mod Organizer 2 for this, but I'm going to do it. I'm just going to right click, create empty mod, SKSC64, create whatever, call it whatever you want. Um, open in Explorer, drag and drop, Ta -da! just close it. Uh, so now, if we want SKSC enabled and we want to do what the instruction said, the instruction said move the PEX files over. So if we look at this data thingy and we look in scripts, these are the scripts that right now the game sees. But if we turn on SKSE64 and refresh, the PEX files all show up. And additionally, if we look in the source directory, we'll see that um, all of the things that SKSE extends, like for example, the normal form doesn't have a get name function, but the SKSE version of a form adds that get name function. So if we scroll down to form, Oh, can I search it? Oh, there's a lot of B's. I want to get to F. There's a lot of D's. Game. A lot of these things. Ta-da! It's form. Uh, we can see that it was overwritten. So, but we can always go check, check, and it's back to normal. I need that so that I can write mods with and without Skyrim uh, script extender. But we want it. We want it, right? So we want to um, check it, but let's hold off on that. What we want to do is go back to that um, folder that it's in. And we want to do what we've done in the previous episodes. When we want to use another mod's code, we need to go to its directory that has the PSC files. We need to copy the path to that directory. Got hair in my mouth. Um, and now we need to add it to our project. So we'll go back to VS Code. It has our project open. I'm just going to control B to open up that explorer, or you can just click this to make it go away and come back. Um, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Uh, going to go into our PBJ, and there's an import section. It even has a commented out thing that says, hey, if you configure your mods folder and call your thing SKSC64, this will just import it. Uh, so we could do one of two things. We could add an import and just paste that directory. Um, or if we want to, let's, uh, let's do it this way. We'll tell the PBJ where our mods are. We may as well to make it easier on ourselves. So we cut this, uh, um, paste this Skyrim mods thingy. And so now it uh, imports, I'll zoom in a little bit. Uh, now it has this. It's just a little bit easier because as you build up your projects, you might be importing like a dozen different libraries. So cool. And we're not using imports. That's a thing for later. Save, build. It compiled. It didn't, didn't have any errors. Let's go back to our script still is pissed about get name um, the like the VS code server thingy that reads all of the code doesn't matter just close VS code open it again basically the thing that looks for functions after you change the imports it takes like I don't know 30 seconds to reload but if you just close and reopen code it's instantaneous so we can actually hover over this get name thing it's there, it says returns the form name. If we go back to this and hit dot and start typing get, we see there's all kinds of stuff. Remember that before SKSE, there were only like two functions, get form ID and get something else. Right now there's all kinds of stuff. We can get the gold value of it, sure. Um, let's say get name. Uh, which is worth 
end, aka base I end dot get gold value. Remember, you gotta add parentheses after those things. Gold. Save. Control Shift B build, or you can always go to terminal run build task. It does the same thing, and hit enter once this thing completes. Your eyes will just learn to scan this to see if there are any errors. Run the game. And now if we run it without SKSE, like either by just running the Skyrim Special Edition uh, executable itself, or if we don't have the script enabled, it's not going to work. I'll run it using SKSE, which um, runs the SKSE loader, and Mod Organizer 2 finds it for us automatically. And I'm going to forget to uh, add those extra PEX scripts via that mod. Now, this should automatically trigger because the user is given some stuff at the very beginning of the game. You picked up one blah, which is worth 60 gold. Ah, I guess the gold value is actually not an SKSE function. Because it works. Huh. Well, that's set gold value. Yeah, get gold value is uh, just works by default. Cool, lessons learned. Um, not lessons, just interesting things. And now if we check this and run it, I might make sure that there isn't a, uh, a theme that I can use to make Mod Organizer bigger for y'all in the screencast. Solitude Winking Skeever. You picked up one Iron Helmet, which is worth 60 gold. You picked up one Iron Gauntlets, which is blah, blah, blah. Let's steal something. <laughs> uh, bounty added. You picked up one empty wine bottle, which is worth one gold. Sweet roll. Two gold. I saw you do that. She's your Slice cheese. Ah. Well, what I say in my defense is I'm leaving. <laughs> cool. Um, so we used an SKSE function, um, and we learned why we would want to do it. Um, are we kind of done? Twenty-seven minutes. That seems pretty fair. Uh, like, you could call any of these things now that you have um, SKSC installed. Um, or any of these things, rather. Get the weight of it, get all kinds of stuff. And this is just form, but it extends, like, if you look at SKSC Mods, SKSC These are all of the objects that it adds extra functionality to. So there's Tons, 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 tons. Um, cool, right? Scripts using it. All right, all right. Let's bail. I think this is cool. Uh, the next one, we're going to use the debugger. Ah, and we're going to use logs. It's going to be awesome. Ah, it's so much fun. All right. Um, all right. That was fun. Go to that YouTube playlist and look for the next episode, which should be called. Uh, What's it going to be called? It's going to be called... Using the Skyrim Script Debugger and Log Viewer, apparently, because that's what my background is. So, I don't know. Go watch it. Uh, the debugger is, like, one of the best things in this entire series. Um, it's the best thing about coding in VS Code. Um, besides the fact that you can just tweak some code and hit Control shift b and like run Skyrim and it all freaking works. So, peace out. Happy modding. I'll see you in like two seconds. Bye-bye. Okay, hey y'all. I feel pretty bad because I didn't teleport you to Riften when you take a shot with your bow. So we'll do that. I feel pretty bad about that. Um, but I already deleted pickup lines, which is stupid.
So we'll just call this uh, bow teleport, telebo, telebo, telebo. I can get rid of my pickup lines uh, profile. Telebo. <laughs> use the default stuff. Don't use profile specific stuff. Uh, create empty mo mod, telebo. Uh, have Skyrim's creation kit write its files into Telebo. This is so stupid. Yeah, 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 yeah. I need to turn it on. Thank you for the reminder. Open Skyrim. Ooh, I can sip my tea. Sorry if you've got misophonia and this bothers you. I do. Excuse me. Um, save. Telebo. Um, quest. New. Telebo quest. Save. Search. Telebo quest. Uh, quest alias. New reference alias. Player ref. Grab a specific reference from any cell. Add a script. Telebo player script uh, extends reference alias. Ah, reference alias spelling is important. Okay, okay. Save. Uh, we could do like something probably nice and advanced and, and proper to uh, get a reference to the location that we're going to teleport to. But I'm just going to use debug so that we can literally uh, emulate COC. Um, we can actually use console util to actually execute the COC command, but we'll use debug. Um, so we're just going to set up our telebo mod right here. Now it'll show up under workspaces. And we can go to scripts and grab the event for on bow shot. Go to events. On player bow shot. Huh, there's two bow shot things. Oh no, there isn't. Last time that was in the middle column. I was like, oh, there are multiple options. You can get the bow, you can get the ammo, you can get the power, you can get um if they're looking at the sun. It's kind of neat. I wouldn't have thought of that, but now that I think about it, I guess it makes sense. Shoo. Um, it's too bad you can't make a string global variable and then you could change it from the console. Um, I wanted to just make a setting, but I'll just do string teleport location equals Riften, B, and Barb, debug dot center on cell, Riften, B, and oh, duh. teleport location, save, build, run it. We don't need SKSE. I don't think we need it for on bow shot, and I don't think we need it for um, um, I don't think we need it for um, any of this. It's raining, kind of. It's just drizzling. It's kind of nice. I like it. I don't think you can hear it very well. I have the desktop audio turned way down. Let me turn it a little bit up for you. Let's bring it up to. Can you hear it now? I've got it really loud. I've got it like zero dB. I'll check it out in the recording to see if this is too loud for y'all. Um, weapons, bow, shoot at that tree. Oh no, it didn't. Did we enable our mod? We didn't enable our fucking mod. Sorry for cursing. Telebo, run. That was going to be so cute. 
Uh, should we do it from somewhere else? Yeah. Um, this is gonna be evil. I don't mean to be evil. Um, let's just shoot someone. We'll shoot an adult. This guy's always kind of a dick. I have no business with you. Leave well, me. Now you do, because you're gonna get shot in the face. Go away. I have. Be People careful. of Rifton, heed my words. Cool. I promise. And I delivered. Peace out. I'll see you in the next episode where we go over debugging and logging. It's going to be awesome. Right. Peace and happy modding. Thank you.